mind in the name of Jesus. Keep your hand of mercy upon her. Do a new work within her. Turn events around in her life. Even the anxiety, the stress of what she's dealing with. Father, as that you intervene and intertwine on that situation. And we speak peace and peace of mind in her spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, that your will be done in her life, oh God. And that she'll find herself in the house of God with prayer and supplication and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Well, God, you know what's troubling her. But you're able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we need to ask for thing, according to the power that worketh within us. Father, do a turn up in her life right now, like never before. And even upon our sister Deaconess Robert, oh God, keep your hand of mercy upon her, even the afflictions that she deal with. But you're able to heal and deliver and set free. Not by the doctor's account, but by Jesus and his word and his power and his might and his deliverance. Bring about a deliverance in her life from the top of her head to the very soles of her feet. Father, keep your hand of mercy upon her, O God. Do a new work, O God, and turn this around for her. In the mighty name of Jesus, O God, we seek you, O God. We call upon your name. And we know that you're quite near in us, and even in our hearts. You're in our heart right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And when we don't know what to pray for, you are the intercessor. You are the chief priest, the holy one of Israel, the Medician and the Messiah. And there's none like thee, O God. We honor you this morning. And we give your name the thanks and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're coming from Psalms 34, but before we do that, we're going to have this Ruffin come and read the morning scripture. Psalms 34. Psalms 34. No, I'm going to read Psalms 34. Psalms 34 and verse, verse 19. That's going to be the morning, I mean, each word. But she's coming with a different word. I'm reading from Psalm 95. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully, joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let, let us shout joyfully to him with songs. For the Lord is the great God and the, and the great King above all gods. And his hands are the, are the deep places of the earth, the heights of his the height of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you today if you will hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts, as as in the rebellion, as in the day of tr of trial and in the wilderness, when your father tested me, they tried me. Through though they saw my work for forty years, I was grieved with that generation and said, "It is it is a people who go astray in their hearts." And they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter the rest, enter my rest. After reading of Psalm 95. The word is already blessed. Amen. Mm -hmm. and we're coming from Psalms 34, verse 19. And we're going to do a series on the suffering of Christ. And this is a suffering walk. Why? Because God loves us. He trusts. Just like he suffered, he wants us to suffer as well. And we have to go through to be made and shaped in his image. It says here, Psalms 34, verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Psalms 34, verse 19, I'll read it again. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. No matter what your affliction is, you will be delivered. Amen? Amen. And that's where we're coming from today. Psalms 34, verse 19, the suffering for Christ. And even King David suffered much. He was yet king, a little boy, dealing with the ready things of God, dealing with the sheep in the field. And he was chosen to be king, but even he had a flaws. He had some things that he needed to be cleaned up from and delivered from, 
And even in leadership, you have to be mindful. The higher you go in God, the greater the tests, the greater the hardships, the greater the persecutions. As I always tell you, it's just like going up stair steps. The higher you go, the other tests, the trials, the tribulations, even temptation comes to you. And you have to be able to endure. And God will show you when temptation is coming. Because we all have a wilderness that we have to go through. We have to go through, we have to be tested, tried, and to see, can you pass the test? And now if you fail that test, that test is coming up again. Mm -hmm. And God will tell you, I need to test you again. People in Pentecostalism believe that God is looking at people who speak in tongues. He's looking at people who has character. Speaking in tongues is a gift, and that is from God. But God is not looking at your tongues. I haven't seen people speak in tongues and meet you in the backyard door. What's wrong with your character? Mm -hmm. God is looking at our character. This is about going to get cracking up. But God is looking at our character. Are you able to adapt and deal with your brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. Can you walk in the spirit of meekness and humbleness? You have to be real humble in this Christian journey. That don't mean because you're humble, you're weak. God wants to see how you're able to take things, go through. He's looking at his development because we're made what? In his image and in his likeness of who he says he is. He wants to see his image and reflection in us. And if your reflection don't line up with his, you won't make it in. You will not make it in. Suffering for Christ, who the psalmist is? King David, king, priest, and prophet. He had a, uh, an anointed ministry. When was this? 1000-300 BC before Christ. Where Asia Minor, he was writing. And it says here, why King David was at a low place and wrote these songs of praise. How? Worship, praise, and deliverance. Even in your dry spell and dry season, you still have to worship the Lord. He was beginning to worship. He had fallen as a king. But God always forgive you. Man will forgive you. And God will restore you if you would allow him. One thing when God restores you, he don't want you to bring up old things. What did King David do? He set up uh, Uriah the Hittite while he was out in the field and had Uriah the Hittite murdered on the front line because he wanted his life. Mm -hmm. And he did it his way. But guess what? King David was still the apple of God's eye in spite of his flaws. And we all have our flaws. You have days when you feel like you're a Christian, and then there are days when you're not feeling anything. Just like you had never been born. Just like you don't even know who God is. But I always tell people, early morning prayer is what's going to help you. Mm -hmm. So King David had a lot of things that he was dealing with. You can be replaced even when you fall. But when you fall, fall into the hands of a holy God. Amen? Amen. Suffering in the state of an experience of one that suffers. <coughs> mm -hmm. Now, affliction is great suffering. You have to suffer in this journey. Is there any breaks in God? No. Absolutely not. There is no breaks. <coughs> you have to go through. So God can get the glory out of your life. And when you get the glory out of your life, it's not just for you, but it's for other people who have who come to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. You're suffering because you're supposed to be a model of Christ, and other people have to see the glory of God in your life. I was at a service back in 2016, and this man from Africa was at a conference, and he was a prophet. He's still living. It was about a couple years ago. And he kept looking at me and watching me during the whole service. And it's a video on Facebook. You've probably seen it. And on the burgundy suit. And he, he said, that man right here in the burgundy suit, come here. He said, the glory of God is on you. Oh, wow. And all the people in that audience, he prophesied to me. Them devils got angry. I heard people grinding their teeth, cutting their eyes in the corner, looking at me like this. Wow, listen to this here. 
And so what is that? He said, those people in the pulpit are upset with you because that man put you not on blast, but he brought your ministry for it. Just before this even started. And them devils got jealous. One of them tried to shut it down. But will you suffer for the cause of Christ? Why did God do that? Sometimes God will put you on display to let the people see this is where the gift is. This, this young man has a gift. He's called. He's been chosen. But in between after that, I began to suffer more. The warfare became greater. You're going to suffer in this walk. Now we're going to uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Verse 11 and number 12. 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse 11 and 12. And that's in the New Testament. And when you have to say amen, take your time. Second Timothy chapter number three, verse eleven and twelve. And it says here, uh, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Icon, at Lystria, which persecuted I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And that Antioch is a place of love, but even those people did not have, they had a hard time receiving the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul is writing these letters to Timothy, who is the son of the gospel. He's teaching him, he's training him, he's nurturing him, because Timothy is a young man, but he's going into pastoring. And Apostle Paul, at times, was away in imprisonment, and sometimes he was traveling. So Apostle Paul was teaching him and grooming him for pastor, pastoral care, what we call it and training him to be a son. He was a son of the faith. So anytime you're called to pastoral ship, you still have to have a cover. My pastor is Pastor Stephon Henderson. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. I couldn't be doing this because it's because of him and Christ in him. But he's teaching him and training him about the persecution. He's trying to tell Timothy in so many words, you will be persecuted. You're going to be persecuted, and everybody's not going to follow you, and everybody's not going to be for you. Apostle Paul also told them in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, when you get on read it, he tell you there's three types of people, carnal, spiritual, and natural. Carnal, spiritual, and natural. So that everybody that walks through those doors, everybody's not spiritual. Some people are carnal, but you still have to learn to counsel them, not persecute them. But in this text here, he's talking about the persecution and the affliction that he dealt with in Antioch. Mm -hmm. And he endured, but out of the Lord, the Lord delivered him. So even in your suffering and in your persecution, you will be delivered. And when you finish that test, that trial, that tribulation, there's no break. As soon as you take your deepest breath, here come another test. God will test and see where your character is. Mm -hmm. He wants to see where you are. I don't care if you're praying 52 times. God wants to see where your character is. Can you take this test? If he didn't love you, he wouldn't be testing you. But because he loved you, he has to bring a test. Who are we taking on? The formness of Christ. As we were reading Sunday school on today, how they spit on him. Oh, they gonna spit on you? They gonna lie on you? They gonna speak against you? They gonna call you all types of names. I remember I told you before, a young man told me when I walked up in the parking lot, here come that old wizard Randy. <laughs> I just looked at him, I didn't even go there. I was 
still young and adorable. You know, I just, just look at people and say, ooh. <laughs> just look at me and just smile. I don't even say nothing. I can call a person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and another friend of mine would have ate him up. Mm -hmm. I ain't even say nothing. That young man's pastoring right now, and people are leaving his church. Mm -hmm. See, you got to be careful who you put your mouth on. Oh, no, I ain't going up there to hear him. No, he ain't no good. Mm -hmm. right, so, okay. See, I didn't say nothing back to him. I just <laughs> smiled a little bit loosely. Just like I hear nothing you have to say. Mm -hmm. Now his ministry dying because of what comes out your mouth. You gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. Did I forgive him? Yes. Did I move on from there? Yes. Everybody not going to heaven. Can nobody tell you? Amen? Amen? Everybody's not going to heaven. But verse number 12 says it very clearly. Yea, and all that, I will live God in Christ Jesus and suffer persecution. Now it says here persecution is one of the forms of another is of those who desire to live a godly life. Loyalty to Christ, his truth and his righteousness standards involves the consistent Resolve not in compromise and yield in our faith. We're supposed to yield in our faith. We don't compromise. When you start living a God, God for your life and living godly, you do not compromise. You don't compromise. That means you don't give a tick for tack. Oh, today I live Sunday and before the people, but on Monday I'm still in the club. I've seen people do that. Oh, the Lord know my heart. I still like the club, though, Rev. I said, oh, but did you have to broadcast it across <laughs> the whole congregation that you still like the club? Yeah. I love the Lord, but he's not who I love my weed, though, for real. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay. That's between you and the Lord. I mean, I, ain't got, I can't persecute you for that. That's what you like. And then this and this. We all still be in deliver from certain things. Some people get delivered from certain things like this. The other things we struggle with, it takes time. But that's not just for you. You're helping other people. One told me, I love the Lord. I mean, I love the Lord. I said, that's nice. He said, but I love my brown stuff, too. Oh, that's between you and your brown stuff. He said he liked his henny, the dark stuff. His henny. He liked his henny. But he loved the Lord. Faithful to church. Read the Bible. Pray, pray better than me almost. But he loved his city. Oh. Is that an affliction? No. That's your flaws. That's something God has not taken the taste out of his mouth yet. Mm -hmm. Everything that God do with you and for you, it takes time. Don't be anxious. The Bible says that be not anxious, but do what? Prayer and supplication. So the more you pray, you pray down the power of God. That's when you get your deliverance. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't pray for you. Some people's deliverance is more personal than others. Mm -hmm. But you still have to remain loyal. Still remain faithful. In spite of your afflictions, in spite of your persecutions, in spite of your addictions, you still come to church. The Bible says, and fail not to assemble thyself to what? To be the believers. Because when we come together, we come in with power. That's where the believers come through each other. Oh, I just want to spend time with God at home. I don't think I need to be in church. Okay. Well, that's what the church is for. Right. At your weakness or your weakest, that's when you should come to church. Because we all have a strength in what? In numbers. And it comes from who? The body of Christ. And who? Jesus Christ, our Savior. So it takes time to be delivered from those things. You're going to always have a thorn in your side. Something that punctures you. But it takes time to be delivered. No one can persecute another saint. We had that years ago when we was in another church. We had this one mother. She wanted to know everybody's business. Oh, I see what you're struggling with. Oh, we're going to keep you in prayer. I found out when I went down, she was talking about everybody's deliverance on the phone. <laughs> and she herself was not delivered. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Now she don't even know her name. See, keep your mouth. Her mind is going to early stages of dementia. Mm -hmm. 
where your mind started to go back to a child or delusions. Not making fun of her, but for years she ran her mouth, running down the saints. We all struggle with stuff. None of us ain't no better than the other person. But some testimonies don't need to be given, even in the church. Certain things don't need to be said, even in the church. It shouldn't be any secrets, even in the church. Your secrets should be attached to your Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. That's one thing I like about Jesus. You tell him your business, he don't tell nobody. He don't gossip. He gonna give you godly counsel even in your affliction. Mm -hmm. And deliver you, and let the people see, I delivered him. I delivered her. And it is not based upon your gender. It's, it's upon the empowerment of Jesus Christ that lives inside of you. He's the one that take care of us. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's going to set you free, not people. And get delivered from people. Amen? Get delivered from people, because people can promise you anything. Man will fail you, but Jesus Christ will not fail you. Amen? And it says here, loyalty to Christ is the truth. And his righteousness standards involves consistent resolve and not in compromise. Our faith is yielded to his diligence. The voices of calling for believers to conform to the world and lay aside every spiritual truth because their godly standards will be faithful, will be deprived of privilege and advantage to ridicule. They will experience grief seeing godliness rejected by the majority. You will face rejection while you're suffering in your affliction. Oh, he ain't all that. He ain't, he ain't really no reverend. That's, he putting on. Really? Well, I do know some actors. <laughs> oh, I know a couple of those. Oh, they, they, they're doing it. They're preaching and howling and screaming and raving and tearing. Uh, he was wonderful. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Got a real problem there. I told him, we'll call your therapist after the service. Oh, that's a real problem there. Something else, that's something else in you. <clears throat> I done seen it. Acting. But in this walk, you will be persecuted. She's so silly. You will be persecuted. And you will face, you're going to face rejection. Even when you try to witness to people, no, I don't want to learn about no more. Some people don't want to know no more. But God loves everybody. He don't hate you. Man will hate you. Man will throw your sins in your face. But God don't throw nothing in your face. The Bible says your sins have been placed in what? In the seal of forgiveness. Never to return again. So even in your affliction, stop persecuting yourself. Oh, I remember when. That's the problem. You remember it too much. You ask God to take your self-conscious mind and wash it up under his blood. Stop remembering those old things. Those cause setbacks. Mm -hmm. And you can't go any further. But if you repent and ask God to forgive you and remove the very stench of sin and the very things that you used to do out of your life, you'll remove them. Mm -hmm. And he'll never reveal it to you ever again. That's what we call the new man. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become what? New. And as you say in the Sunday school, he sees you justified, clean, pure, and living holy. Well, somebody else may judge you. Christ will see you a different way. Mm -hmm. We still talk about the sufferings. You have to suffer in this journey. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always feel good. It's not the best feeling in the world. But at the end of the day, you still pay the price. And there's another place after this place, what we call New Jerusalem. A place called heaven. A place called heaven. Amen? Amen. And it says here, because of your godly standards, the faithful will be deprived and privileged, advantage, or to be ridiculed, but will experience grief in seeing godliness rejected by the majority. We should all ask ourselves, have I suffered persecution because of my commitment or to live in a godly, godly manner, or is I lack, lack of suffering 
a sign that I have not stood firmly for the righteousness which Christ died for. You should always ask your questions, yourself questions. Am I really living the life? Yeah, you are living the life. That's why you're being persecuted. But only God can judge you. Only God can deliver you. Only God can set you free. I'm going to Matthew chapter number 5, verse 2 through 12. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 10 through 12. Yeah. And it coincides with the Lord's Prayer. Chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 10, 11, and 12. And it says here, when you have to say amen. amen. So there's, there's a price you pay, but then there's also a reward. <laughs> God will reward you. Not man. God will reward you. Amen? Amen? And it says here, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, that means speak against you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you, falsely, for my sake. Oh, they're going to come against you. But no, my first bishop said, never chase a lie. Bishop Sanders told me years ago, back in 2000, he said, son, don't you never chase a lie. Let a lie be a lie. Mm -hmm. He said, because they, if they lie to you, they're going to lie on Jesus Christ. And you don't have to chase it, and you don't have to cover it up. If they lie on you, the truth will be revealed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Years ago, I was working at a telemarketing place, and this woman fired me, and nobody in the family believed me. Nobody believed me. Three years later on the news, the same lady that fired me, the news uncovered them. They was under fraud. Mm -hmm. And my mother looked at me and said, ain't that the lady that fired me? I said, right there with the black hair. Her name was Gina. She was Italian. She said, I was not a very good telemarketer. I told you off. I told me to get out. And she was running for Channel 7 News. I kept laughing. <laughs> I, 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 I stopped laughing. And that was the point. She said, Mama, it's really pretty. Stop laughing. <laughs> so, my name is Gina. <laughs> to Channel 7, I said, hi. My mother kept laughing. She said, you played too much. <laughs> well, see? God was taking me away from those people because they were going to get caught for fraud. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want my hands oh, in that. Yes. He did it early, three years earlier. You can't find none of those people right now. Mm -hmm. When God pulls you away from certain people, that don't mean you go up and dig them up and bring them back into your life. Mm -hmm. When God delivers you from people, that means you stay away from them because they are bad seeds. Amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 12 says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is the, your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. There were prophets before you that were deeply persecuted. Jeremiah the prophet, Jeremiah chapter 20, one of my favorite verses. He was persecuted because he spoke the things of God, what we call the oracles, and his name being exalted. He told King Pasher and the rest of the shepherds in Jeremiah 23, that judgment was coming. They got mad with Jeremiah and beat him 40 lashes. That means they stripped him from off his garments like the Sunday school lesson, and they beat him with a whip because he prophesied the truth. They're going to beat you because you're speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. They're going to whoop you for that. The prophets of old persecuted, were persecuted deeply for saying the things of God when the Spirit of God moved upon them. And one thing you have to remember, before Jeremiah died, he'd seen it come to pass. But when he died, they split him in half. They split the man in half because he spoke the truth. You suffer much in this Christian journey, and that's not to scare anybody. 
They ain't gonna split me. I run. I'm not running. <laughs> uh, uh, you trying to catch me? Uh, uh, uh. Mm -mm. No, you ain't get me. But they will come back. They gonna tell lies on in this in this war. Oh yeah, John the Baptist. They cut his head off. The woman wanted his head removed. Jesus Christ. They crucified him because he spoke the truth. He didn't break the law. He fulfilled it. You're going to be persecuted in this walk. This is a suffering way, I heard the old church mother say. She says, son, don't you, my, my lady named Mother Jones and Mother Brown said, don't you never backslide. She says, stay in prayer, study that word, and fast and pray. She said, don't you ever go back. She said, this is a suffering walk. She said, that's nice up there. That pulpit, <clears throat> she said, but even in that, there's a suffering. There's a price that you're going to pay. She said, everybody ain't going to accept you. And everybody not going to walk with you. And you cannot walk with everybody. But this is a suffering way. You got to pay the price. I've seen many pass on. And it looked like they were sleeping. Resting. Some people came to me in dreams and told me they made it in. Because mm -hmm. they suffered. Mm -hmm. you, this is a suffering walk. But can you take the persecution that comes with it? But there's a price and a reward at the end. Amen? Amen. That's what God gave you this morning. This is a suffering for Christ. But can you deal with the affliction, the persecution? It comes in many areas, physically, spiritually, mentally, financially. Mm -hmm. And there will be those that God will send to help you. Mm -hmm. You can tell when the real ones come to help you because they don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Or the Lord laid on my heart to give you this and you never hear nothing about it. The Lord told me you need this. Uh, you don't want me no money back. No. You just take this. Mm -hmm. I've had that happen. I've had people slide money envelopes up under my door. And told me, the Lord told me to give you this. You're going to be all right. And nobody ever knew. Mm -hmm. This is a hard walk. But it's worth it at the end. Mm -hmm. Amen? So anything you're going to give for me is a lot of encouragement. Of course, I have a sense of humor. You can see that. And, um, but it's to encourage you. Some things are serious and some things are just laughable. You have to be spiritually balanced in this walk. Everybody's not suffering on the same level. Mm -hmm. And you can tell those who are suffering with you because they hear every week. Some people can't even do, deal with the word. That says a lot. Something wrong with their character. Some people want to be in the world. They don't want to be in service. Some people don't want to be saved. Right. One girl put on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, I'm tired and I'm getting out of here. We thought she was going to be able to go to another state. She put it on Facebook. The next day they found her dead. Oh. Killed herself. Oh. Couldn't take it. Already had a hard life. She was trying to become a Christian. It wasn't working. Did God love that? No. Suicide is a sin. Because mm -hmm. that's not your life. That's God giving you life. And she can deal with life and the issues. But you gotta remember this. She left behind a family. You got people grieving you because you took your own life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, you're gonna suffer in this walk. But stay focused. Stay balanced. Stay in the Lord. Don't allow what's out here to pull you back into the world. Mm -hmm.